Hello and welcome back to Movie Health Community, the internet's number one source of health warnings at the movies. Today we are watching Godzilla X Kong colon The New Empire. I thought it was A New Empire. I guess it's The. Which I believe is the fifth movie in this cinematic universe. But before we talk about whether this movie is any good, let's talk about if this movie is safe for photosensitive audiences. The answer is... No! Godzilla X Kong The New Empire is not safe for photosensitive audiences. This movie has multiple scenes with really strong strobe effects. These include one where an aircraft is being flown through a portal. That one is over when some music starts playing. There's one where somebody dozes off in class and has a vision of rapidly changing disjointed images and they flash so fast that there's no way of telling exactly what's happening, so you're not gonna miss much if you close your eyes for that. There is intense lightning during a rainy scene, and there are some glowing effects with both monsters and items of the sci-fi variety that do create frequent and unpredictable strobe effects. So we are giving Godzilla X Kong The New Empire a 10 out of 10 for flashing lights. Extreme caution. There's also a lot to talk about with camera motion, mainly the director's love of a very particular camera movement that involves a very slow roll that can be really disorienting. This happens frequently, including in an environment where the laws of up and down are frequently reversed, which is another element that can and will be disorienting. And then, of course, there's a lot of action at high speeds, extreme heights, lots of flying, all that kind of stuff. Then in terms of mental health, there is extensive animal gore in this movie. None of the blood and guts is red, so that does mitigate the effect of the gore, but it is quite graphic otherwise. And then just as a side note, this just has to do with current events and timing on things. There are four bridges that are hit and destroyed in this movie, including three right in a row. And with this movie coming out the same week as the Key Bridge disaster in Baltimore, those moments can be a little uncomfortable with the timeliness of this release. Now, is this movie any good? You definitely have to be the right audience for this movie. If you're looking for a colorful spectacle with not a lot of substance and not having to think very hard, then this might be the movie for you. If you are still giddy about the novelty of having giant CGI Godzilla fighting with uh, giant CGI King Kong, then this movie is probably for you. If you're like a neurodivergent family member of mine who is seven years old and assigns a Godzilla character to every member of the family as who they are, which in my case, I guess I'm Rodan, then this movie might be for you. If you like staring at Rebecca Hall's face, which I definitely do, this movie might be for you. Unfortunately for me, Rebecca Hall's face did not save this movie. I did not think there was a lot of substance to this movie. I didn't think there was anything deep. After I recorded my review for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, I listened to another reviewer talking about how a movie needs to justify its existence. Like, if you're doing a franchise movie, there needs to be something special about it that's being brought to this franchise. And with this MonsterVerse franchise, this being the fifth movie of that franchise, I don't feel like this adds anything extraordinary or particularly special that sets it apart from any of the other previous entries. Like with the first movie, the one thing everyone remembers about that is how heavily Brian Cranston was featured in the marketing and how he was gone within the first half hour of the movie. Godzilla vs. Kong from a few years ago definitely took a hit from having a same day streaming release as a COVID measure. I had actually completely forgotten that Godzilla vs. Kong was the movie where there was an upside down earth in the sky in the same deal. I had forgotten that until I watched this sequel in the theater. But yeah, it turns out I had forgotten a lot about previous entries in this franchise, particularly about Godzilla vs. Kong. 
And I feel like three years from now, I'm not gonna remember anything that's going on in this movie. Some of the human drama worked, especially the stuff involving the child in this movie. As I stated before, it's always a treat for me to just be able to stare at Rebecca Hall for a little bit, but this movie didn't feel like it needed to happen. It felt like it was just made because the studio executives needed to continue another franchise and not because there was anything really noteworthy being added to it. Some of the spectacle and some of the colors are pretty to look at, but overall, I cannot in good conscience give this movie a good grade. So I am going to give Godzilla X Kong The New Empire a D plus. Thank you so much to our readers on Tumblr and Facebook, and as always, an extra special thanks to our patrons over on our Patreon page, whose names are scrolling across the screen like credits right now. As a reminder, nothing produced by Movie Health Community is medical advice, nor has any of it been reviewed by any medical professionals. Make sure to leave a like on this video, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we post new videos, and leave a comment if you have anything to add to this discourse, especially if you disagree with anything I've said. We love hearing from you. And as always, stay safe at the movies.